The following is a special presentation of iRacing on LSR TV, your home for sim racing. The following is a presentation of the iRacing Esports Network. Live tonight from the Richmond Raceway, LSR TV with you to say good evening, Sim Racing fans, and welcome to LSR TV's continuing coverage of the Championship Esports Association American Bull Supply Truck Series. We're tonight on the iRacing Esports Network. We go racing from Ridgeway, Virginia. At Richmond Raceway, round 16 of the 2018 campaign. We're happy that you're kicking a week off with us on your home for sim racing. As always, it's myself, Evan Pasoko, alongside with Trevin Valderrama with you at the LSR TV booth downstairs. The executive producer, Cisco Scaramuza, brings us to you. And Trevin, we head into Richmond as we close closer and closer into those final couple of weeks on the calendar year. And it is a fun couple of weeks do up Eldora Canadian Tire Motorsports Park on the horizon before we get to those still we go short track racing tonight at the three quarter mile Richmond Raceway always a fun one and the key thing to look at I think is well we're not racing under the lights it is a sunny afternoon that's going to have a big effect on how these race trucks handle Exactly. You said it right. You know, sunny afternoon. It is 86 degrees here with a track temperature of 95 degrees. So that will only add to the excitement that we have on top here tonight. And with that, you know, it's a D-shaped miniature oval. So you got two similar turns, but completely different at the same time because you have to enter the both turns a little bit different every lap. And of course, we come into this in a position in the championship where there's still a couple of weeks to be made up. Iowa in the Milwaukee Mile, and we will make a return to Milwaukee after having that one rained out uh, just a couple of weeks ago. That'll be next week, so that kind of sets us up for a few weeks of non-stop action here on LSR TV and the IRA City Sports Network. So next Sunday, make sure you're with us for that race. And that'll be August the 19th. And then on the 26th, we continue with regularly scheduled action from Eldora. But Trippet, as we come into this evening, it is all Christian Peterson. We spent last week on Wednesday with the Cars Esports who were talking about just how tight all of those championships are. Not necessarily the same story over here on Sunday evenings. He has a 137-point lead in the championship on top of Tyler Dalton. Now, from there on back, there's a lot going on. Second through 10th, a lot to follow over the course of the season here as we have about 10 races still to go. But certainly, P1 looks pretty safe at the time being. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, Christian Peterson is always so consistent in this series and every series that we see him on on LSR TV week in, week out. Uh, but Seth the Merchant, we talk a lot about a lot, but he hasn't been here the past few weeks and he has dropped down one position. He was second. Now he's third. Uh, Tyler Dalton has taken that spot. So uh, he is not here tonight as well. So, you know, I, I can just imagine that he's going to drop more as the weeks progress that he isn't here. But uh, you know, we can't wait to see him back and John Theodore William Kemp are also looking to take positions away from Seth the Merchant and hopefully Tyler Dalton. And this race is going to be 150 laps in distance, so not a grueling length in this race, but of course when you're on a short track, a lot happens in every single trip around to the racetrack, Trevin, and the reason I mention that we're in the daytime conditions, most racetracks you're normally there in the day, sometimes you're there at night. I find Richmond's the opposite. We so often see races here evening conditions a lot more grip down on the racetrack so this one i think might be a lot more driver versus track than we're used to seeing at a racetrack like this 
without a doubt, you know, it, it, it makes everything just a little bit more exciting uh, for all these drivers and for all of us watching at home. And uh, I'm really excited. I was talking to some guys. Uh, they said during practice they were running side by side. They had some great racing. And, you know, if, if it's anything like practice, we're in for a good race, Evan. We certainly look forward to that one. Trucks are down track side, so let's join them. Here's a look at your LSR TV starting grid. Pole position going to belong to the 06 machine. That'll be Gerald Campbell will bring us to the green flag, and he will be accompanied on the front row by the 19. That's Tyler Dalton rolling off in second. Matt Cocker, Reese Bayham going to be in the number, I guess, row two positions, but positions third and fourth respectively. And then just behind them, it's the 02 of Devin Morgan, who starts in fifth. John Lyde in the 22 machine will start in the 6th position 7th. We'll go to 84 of John Theodore. We talk about him a lot week in and week out. Christian Peterson, our points leader, will be starting P8. William Kemp will be starting P9 in that 09 machine. Um, and Jeremy Adams will be rounding out your top 10 here at Richmond's. And you continue on through back to row number six. Andrew Fayash the third starts there in his Toyota Tundra. And 12th belongs to the 15. That is John Mignaka. The unlucky number 13 starting spot is in the hands of the 90 of Jeremy Watkins this evening. Todd Novosad to his right-hand side will start 14th. And Kyle Leverall deep in the pack trying to work his way forward. The Logitech Chevrolet is 15th. Jacob Porter in that number three machine will be starting 16th. Matthew Murphy. P17, P18 will go to Tom Morano, and that's your last truck to take a qualifying time. Rest of these are on provisionals. That will be Paul Henley in the 16th, starting 19th, 20th. Uh, Kenny Lowry and Derek Paulson will be rounding out your 21 truck field for 150 laps. Your complete look top to bottom. Let's talk a little bit more in depth about this Richmond Raceway trip, as we noted, three quarters of a mile in distance. So as we race tonight for 150 laps, we will go 113 miles over the course of the race. But 14 degrees to bank it in the quarters, 8 degrees on the front stretch. That little bit of a curve to the front straightaway that makes this a D-shaped oval will also offer drivers plenty of passing opportunities if they get brave enough, especially late in this race, headed down to quarter number one. That could be one of the most entertaining parts of the racetrack to keep an eye on. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you know, just these kind of corners that you're going to have to take into, you know, uh, the one turns one and two, you're going to have a good entrance going in because you're going to be able to arc it easier, but it's going to be a little tougher coming out of turn two. And, you know, you have that wall right next to you coming out of turn two, but turn three, you're going to have a difficult arc going in, but a better exit because that wall continues to go out. And you speak of those walls, uh, awfully tight right there where you saw the trucks just pass into corner number one, basically right up against the yellow line. So if you do have some issues at that part of the racetrack, things do not tend to get off uh, off of the hook without any issues. This time by, though, Pace Car is going to be headed in. And as always, so happy that you're spending a Sunday night with us at LSR TV and the iRacing Esports Network. The Pace Car going to be down and in. And the field is in the hands of the 06 of Gerald Campbell. We'll have to wait till they come to the restart box as we get set to go racing for the Richmond 150 on the CEA American Bull Supply Truck Series. We're off and away. First time to turn one. Cocker looks low. Thinks better of it side by side for the lead. Now Campbell clears in the center. The 84 of Theodore was trying to look to go somewhere, but just couldn't happen. Jared Campbell takes an early lead, and the first three are single file here tonight. Uh, the 02 of Devin Morgan as well. Then uh, we have our first battle, well, actually, between John Theodore and the number one of Reese Bayham. He's fallen back all the way from fourth position, uh, so we'll see how he turns out going on the letter. That's going to be the hope is... Just try to work yourself into position. Try to get on a good green flag stretch here. Lap times for your top qualifiers in the low 22-3 range. Certainly, the longer we go off into a run here, the faster, or I should say the slower and the higher those lap time numbers are going to be. Uh, but you're still getting around this racetrack less or more than two times, I should say, every single minute. So if this race were to be able to break into a green flag stretch, you'd start to see the laps come off of the score to pile on it ever so quickly. Race leader Campbell's broken away just a little bit. Then it's Cucker Dalton to Morgan. One, two, the three in line in their own little bit of a pack for side-by-side -side. further on down to P9. That's the 77 of Fayash. Yeah, Fayash always doing a great job here. 
in the uh, pool American Pool Supplies series here. Uh, he's done a great job passing the number 22 of John Lyde for that ninth position going down the back stretch. But everybody doing a great job knowing that it's a short track and anything can happen at any time. So they just want to log some laps. Already on lap five here at Richmond. So, uh, you know, these drivers just need to continue to do what they're doing and hopefully get to the end of this race fairly quickly. And the qualifying efforts, obviously, some drivers better than others. Some drivers race better in race trim than their cars are on that one lap run. The trend used to be a couple years back, and the way it was as well at the NASCAR National Touring Series level was simply that, you know, you got two laps, your best lap was the one that would count. Oftentimes, second lap didn't matter, depending on what racetrack you were at. But recently, and especially on the sim, a lot of the leagues we see, you only get one shot at it, one lap. That's all that these drivers have had. So as we see somebody like the 77 of Andrew Fayash continue to try to march forward, he's already got three spots, but he wants another one on the inside of William Kemp for P7. Maybe that's a car that didn't get quite everything they wanted to out of that Q session. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, you said it right. You know, d different drivers do different things during uh, practice and qualifying and then have their truck completely set up for racing. And it's working out for Andrew Fayash and uh, the better parts because now he's going to take that 09 uh, position. He's going to try to at least for that seventh position, working down the front straightaway on lap number eight, now going to turn number one. We'll see how he works out. But, you know, working on that bottom side, you know, it's a great way to get around the track, but it also burns your tire up a little bit more quicker than the guy on the outside. It absolutely does, and that's the challenge if you want to be the person on the attack is you do have to realize that you're going to be using that equipment up a little bit more so than other drivers. The 77 of Fayash does get up and around the Unan, and he will clear him for that position. So, and Fayash now into a race high P7. He's not the only driver on the move, though. I know a little bit further back, Kenny Lowry in the number 54 truck. He just now completes a move on the four to Kyle Everall, so that'll maintain his 13th running spot, but he's already up seven in his own right. He's got a couple of drivers trying to make some noise early on from Richmond. Yeah, and you know, these drivers, again, just doing a great job. You know, we have a little bit of side-by-side -side battles going on here and there. Uh, right now, between the number 22 and the 23, uh, that's Lyde and Peterson going into turn number three right now. And Lyde on that top side, he's, Christian Peterson's going to keep that position for now. Maybe John Lyde is going to try something else. He tried to do that high side a little bit, but that's going to have to wait for a little bit longer into the run if he wants that to happen. Uh, now under pressure from the number 15 of John Magnaka going down the back straightaway. So we'll see how this works out for him as well going into turn number three, Evan. Yeah, that's the objective uh, as Magnaka tries to continue to work his way forward. He's gained a position so far, but the likes of Adams and company all in and around him. No uh, maneuvers happening quite yet. And even furthermore forwards, Christian Peterson was trying to make some moves a few laps ago. None of that panned out. So he still uh, is down a position in ninth. Good news is, should say, that of the 21 cars that we ran you through top to bottom on the LSR TV starting grid, all of them have been able to take you to the green flag, all of them currently running on your race lead lap and if you look all the way to the front of that lap it's Gerald Campbell still leading he had pulled a good little margin comfortable couple of car lengths between he and Cucker however 69 machine took over the second spot as Dalton fell down the leaderboard to where he sits right now in fourth and Matt Cucker's about the challenge for the race lead here he's closed in quickly the gap one and two less now than one truck yeah, I've been watching that gap, and the way he's running is just a little bit better than Jared Campbell. Matt Cucker, I wouldn't be surprised to put, or to see him put his nose down a little bit further into a turn coming up here pretty soon, because he's just doing such a great job. He has a fast truck here tonight at Richmond, so we'll see how this all works out for him. Uh, Matt Cucker still tracking the number 06 of Jared Campbell going into turn number one. You mean to try to track him and... Just maybe in a position where the 69, as opposed to maybe what you'd see later in a race where somebody's a little bit more desperate and they'll try to get as far away from the tire tracks of the vehicle in front of them as opposed to, you know, running in line with them. It appears that Cucker's been closing the gap, absolutely, but content at the moment with not, as we mentioned, tearing up the equipment, something that a driver who's making a lot of early moves can do, certainly if you don't balance that 
with a little bit of patience. So with the battle for the race lead goes on hold, I think the next fight may come for P6. It's Reese Bayham at number one of his sheet, and there's Fayak, who's up four. He wants another spot. Kemp is right there also, so his four cars stack up as the O9 loses some speed off of the corner, and here comes Peterson. He wants that spot back. The O9 took it from him. He wants to take it on back, and the outside line is going to make sure that Kemp is in this race, side by side down the back there, and in front now as Fayash to the inside of the one. A lot of action going on in this second pack, led by John Theodore, uh, but we got two by two battle going on right now. Who's going to be able to edge each other out? Is Andrew Fayash going to edge it? Reese Bayham out. We'll see how this works out for Reese going down the back stretch. He's just going to be able to get right by side him and pass him down the back stretch but he's going to commit to that bottom line again the 77 is and I believe what we're going to see of this a little bit more as he comes up just a smidge enough to let Reese Bam get away and now under pressure from William Kemp and Christian Peterson. They're going to double up on the 77 as he was unable to complete that maneuver and I think he's in a an okay position despite the fact how close they are because those two trucks behind are still side by side. We were talking a little bit earlier in this one before we went to green with Kyle Barnes, league admin at the Championship Esports Association, telling us that throughout the practice sessions they've had over the course of the week, they've been able to see a lot of side-by-side -side action for up to 10 laps at a time. So as the 09 does win out in that fight, now it's a lot more of a concern for the 77. He would much rather have those cars behind him fighting with each other as opposed to close it in on the back bumper for the 77. Not that hard off of turn four. Nine with a run, probably could have dove to the inside. Again, the inside is wide open with the way that that front straightaway works. As you see the 23 go to the inside of the 09 in a fight for eight, so he'll try it again. But the 09 decided not to attack Fayash, and that might hurt him as Peterson goes for the move. Yeah, and the one thing you got to think about is if even when uh, Christian Peterson goes to that bottom side of the 09 of William Kemp, He's still going to have the truck of Andrew Fayash right in front of him. We saw that happen in turn number three the previous time. So uh, even if he gets below him, he still has to get around Andrew Fayash as well. So falls back in line, and we'll see what he does in turn number three. And while all this is happening, Jared Campbell, again, is pulling a lead back out on Matt Cucker to 0.5 of a second. As just as we say that, it goes down to 0.43 of a second. So we'll see how that works out for them as they're still going at it. Uh, but 23 still on that bottom side, Evan. Yeah, he's still on the uh, bottom side of the racetrack, certainly. They all tuck back up those right up against the outside wall as they come down the back straightaway and the space it with all of these trucks uh, kind of uh, the same. You, know, you get a group here or there, 34 trucks on top of each other, uh, maybe a smaller gap, something like Tyler Dalton right now in fourth, I think's a perfect example. Nowhere near the trucks in front of him and well out in front of the trucks behind him, all alone in fourth, but that's certainly not what you see everywhere. He's probably one of the most uh, segregated trucks you're seeing on the racetrack right now. Everybody else, thick traffic. Now, they are single filed out, yes. We've gone 24 laps uninterrupted, now lap 25 it works for your race leader, Gerald Campbell, who was once again started to open up a gap over Matt Cucker in a battle between first and second. With any time there's trucks remotely close to one another on the racetrack, you are not in a safe position. No, absolutely not, especially at a short track like this where everybody has different braking points and one little slip up here could mean a truck into the back end of you. It's happened multiple times to me, so, uh, you know, everybody's doing such a great job so far, but, you know, later into this race, you could see a lot more drivers diving a little bit further into the corner, and uh, we'll see how this works out. Right now, the 77 Andrew Fayash under, or attacking, the number Reese Bam on that bottom side, trying to get that back again, trying uh, to try his hand again, uh, did, was unsuccessful last time out. We'll see how if he does anything different this time. See him diving it down a little bit more, trying to get to that back bumper of Reese Bam. And Bayham's constantly under fire. He's only gone backwards thus far this evening. So you're the driver of the one Chevrolet. You might have to pick it up a little bit, eat away at those tires more so than you would if everything was absolutely smooth sailing and get a little bit defensive. I always like to say, best defense is a great offense, and you got to pull away just a little bit as Theodore in the 84 in fifth position is not out of range for the one, and in fact, not the greatest exit that time off for the quarter uh, for the Corey Bush Chevrolet of John Theodore. So 
uh, the, the one machine's best option here is, I think, go up there, try to get in that spot and put a car between you and the guys behind you. The one goes to the inside, though. He wants to protect that bottom lane, but I don't know if Fayash getting the outside on a free ticket's going to be the best idea. Great run that time at a turn number two. Almost cleared down into the quarter. Going to be a little bit harder for the 77 to get back to the gas at this end of the racetrack. But he's got him. And Fayash moves up the P6. And now here comes the 23 of Peterson. He'll also slide a bounty outside of that time at the line. Had him for seventh. I think that the tires are getting to the point where you can't run that bottom side and are able to pass. I think it's getting to the point where if you get back to the gas a little bit too quick, your truck is going to step out on you. So the top side is the way to go because you're able to get to that gas a little bit quicker and able to wind it up a little bit more on that top side and get a great run down the back stretch and as we've seen from Andrew Fish and Christian Peterson back to back a great run down the front stretch Evan. Great run on that front straightaway just a tad a bit longer than the back stretch based on that curve of the D-shaped oval but I think either end of the race track is going to be a good passing zone. It does tend to be a little bit more difficult to complete passes coming out of four simply because both the inside and the outside can get a good run because you're not coming off of that sharp exit of two again you kind of lean into that 30 degree exit off of four uh, that leads you onto the front straightaway no doubt but we've seen a couple of resurgences here and there trucks have backed off and in a while since there's uh, been something going on right up at the foot of the field it's still Campbell Cocker Morgan one two and three and Adalton still all by himself in fourth, and I'm still convinced that John Theodore's P5 very much under threat. There's a question of when Fayash wants to pounce. Yeah, and we've seen Fayash. I've been watching him for a little bit. He's been looking to that high side just like he is right now, trying to work something out in his head for more laps to come. You can see that door open, and then he closes it going down the front stretch, so we'll see what he elects to do. Christian Peterson was electing to take that bottom side about a half a lane lower than the number 77, so just running his own line, waiting to see what Andrew Fayash the third does going down into the back stretch and you know, seeing how what line he takes to see how to get around the number 84 of John Theodore. And Theodore's been pretty quiet this evening. He is up two from where he started, but hasn't been making a lot of noise sometimes being a little bit more quiet and stealth certainly I would say works to your advantage and he's really hoping again that that 23 of Peterson to put some pressure on the 77 they kind of worked together that last time when they were able to make the move on Reese Bayham because the 77 is really the one that flashed that it was high forced that one machine to go low as we saw that battle happen down to one and once 77 was able to establish positioning, the 23 just kind of followed on through. So maybe that's also the thinking here with Peterson is I just work with the 77 more so against him. And he probably could have gone to the inside, but he didn't. And that leads me even more to believe that he wants to take it easy right now. Could have gone side by side for sixth down the back. Instead, stays behind the 77. He's kind of making Fayash do all of the dirty work. And he follows him through trying to take care of the Global Comm Chevrolet. Yeah, and, you know, if Andrew Fayash gets through John Theodore and then John realizes what's happening and starts to block that area, Christian Peterson might be stuck behind him for a few more laps, and that allows Andrew Fayash to get away a little bit further. Right now, Andrew Fayash and Christian Peterson are together pretty good, but if that does happen, it's going to get a little bit more separated, and uh, we'll have to see what happens there. Right now, we have Todd Notifasad, the first car, a lap down, uh, and we'll see how this works out for Todd. He's a little bit in front of the battle that we're talking about right now so uh, lapped car is obviously going to be a presence of mind here at Richmond as it is a less than a mile track here tonight Evan. And, and it, the funny thing is you know you look at uh, some of the other race tracks that are short track-esque certainly within the race tracks that we have seen here Sunday specifically with the CEA American Bull Supply Truck Series Richmond not that short of a track sure we still go to the intermediates and yeah, we still go to the big tracks, but when we say short tracks in this series, we mean, mean short tracks, and there's tons of them still to come this year. Irwindale, New Smyrna, the Bullring at Las Vegas, Martinsville on the bigger end of the spectrum, a place like an ISM, a Phoenix, which is kind of 
in the same ballpark as here at RIR, and then Rockingham, one of the more truck-oriented tracks later on this season. Those are the real short tracks that we see, so this is kind of an intermediate for the standard that we race on on this kind of a calendar, but uh, the racing certainly like around a place like a new Smyrna, just a little bit more real estate maybe than where we were last week at Sobo, where we saw the same kind of competition, but uh, a lot more incidents when we were 41 laps into that one. Yeah, and these guys are doing such a great job. They know what their car can handle. They know that it's a little difficult in the sunlight, so maybe not pressing a little bit too hard. Just as I say that, the number 77, Andrew Fash, goes down below John Theodore, knows that there's a car up high, so John Theodore will not be able to get a run on that top side, so maybe Andrew Fash is going to get a little better entrance into this corner. No, John Theodore closes the door on the 77. Great job done by John Theodore to keep his position, Evan. And that 77 machine now is going to be in the middle of a three wide. That 34 off of the outside of the racetrack is Tondova. Sad that is a lapped truck, not for position, as he's all the way at the back in 21st and will be the first truck to lose his lead lap status. And somehow through all of that, nothing changes. It is still Theodore fifth, Fayash in the number six spot, and Peterson in seventh. Bayham and one machine's been doing a good job of kind of hanging on and hasn't made a ton of noise since dropping it back there but maybe it certainly hasn't fallen off at the pace that I would have expected when you consider you know the, the speed in which that those two drivers once they got to the outside their surgical ability to just get the position and execute immediately no fuss about it when you know some of the other side by side fights and whatnot we've seen in this still young race have you know gone on six seven laps of side by side they were able to do that uh, rather quickly so that tells me how good those two cars are and how confident they are Trevor back in a fight for six though Peterson may not be so content with following Fayash around he sticks a nose to the outside that's a tough lane to get positioning in when you come from behind but if you can get it it's good and there's the run at a turn number four Peterson great job as he'll slot in the P6 nice move and watching from a different kind of view, I saw Andrew Fayash kind of get a little bit sideways going out of that corner. So that lent a hand to Christian Peterson. He probably saw Christian Peterson pressuring Andrew. So he got to the gas a little bit sooner than he should have. But it worked out for Christian Peterson. Just to say that, caution comes out. Yeah, we were just about to get to one-third distance, and it is problems in turn one. Jacob Porter is backed into the outside wall in the number three. And it does start with him and the 48 of Tom Moreno. Second look at the LSR TV replay. Going to give us a better idea of this one. It was a side-by-side -side fight. And Porter just pushed up a little bit too much. Certainly, I don't think meant to get into the 48, Trevin. But tried to squeeze him up just a little bit. Turns him sideways. And uh, those are the trucks that end up at the outside wall. The three is the first one I saw. He had gotten hit hard by Campbell. But... Tom Moreno and that 48 hard into the outside wall on his own as he nosed it in, somehow not getting hit by Jerry Watkins, who's lucky to get out of that. Yeah, absolutely. And you know that, you know, we just have a little bit of a short track action going on, maybe just a little quick tap on the right or left rear, just at the wrong time. And unfortunately, a truck was there and he had nowhere else to go. So really unfortunate break for the 06 of Jared Campbell with the wreck right in front of him and really nowhere else to go. Nowhere else to go, and race leaders are going to be coming down to the pit lane. This Matt Cucker in the number 69 now takes over the top spot with your race leader having been involved in that one. David Morgan in second, Tyler Dalton third. So one, two, and three into the pit boxes. We'll see what Cucker can do. He is not at the complete far end of the pit lane, but with the 19 coming down a couple of spots behind him, he should be in a great position to win the race off for the pit lane. The rule, as it has been many a times this year, is, is four sets, or two, I, I guess I should say, two complete sets of tires on the pit lane. Not everybody in agreement, and Matt Cucker has to have some sort of a penalty because he is nowhere near the top spot off the of pit road. Tyler Dalton Either the first one in and out that takes four tires. They complete service at one third distance marker and second off of the pit lane. Theodore, Lowry, Peterson, Novasad. It's not until you get way back to about ninth off of the pit lane at best where Cucker finally rejoins the surface. Yeah, and you know, it's it's really tough to get through a pit box and 
see that happen. You know, it, it's it, it's a part of racing, though. You know, you have races on the track and you have races off of pit road. So you know, two different a race inside of a race, essentially. And uh, you know, Andrew Fayash obviously taking huge advantage of that. Uh, Christian Peterson as well, and Devin Morgan jumping to that P number one. Great job done by him and John Theodore in fourth. Just getting some confirmation together, we saw that 69 machine sit down in his stall for an extended period of time. Thought that maybe he had a speeding penalty entering the pit lane. Of course, we know the CEA officials closely monitor things like pit box infractions on their way in and out. So thought that that might have been a possibility. The 69 Matt Cucker was apparently repairing damage. I did not see him get into anybody down in turns one and two. It looked like he was able to avoid all contact, but that's the note being slipped to us from the tower is that it was not a penalty and that it was going to be some damage repairs. So uh, that'll certainly uh, not make things feel much better, but uh, it gives him a challenge to have to work through the field. Trevin, I guesstimated he was about ninth off of the pit lane when you factor in everybody and you cycle through on the scoring pylon. Matt Cucker is going to be dealt a P13. Certainly not as bad luck as Gerald Campbell, the race leader who had been involved in that accident as we saw in the second look there, but uh, tough go as all of a sudden a lot of your top runners sprinkled outside of the top 10. Yeah, and you know, that's just always exciting to see, you know, just have a little bit of shake up inside of this race. Right now, Jared Campbell out of this race. Uh, Jacob Porter and Tom Morano also four laps down. Uh, Todd Novosad got his lap back, but right now we're doubling up, and we'll see how these guys can charge back to the front. A yeah, quick caution once everybody is able to get back out and out of the pit lane. We double up and we get set to restart in this race. Good opportunity to remind you that coverage of the CEA American Bull Supply Truck Series brought to you by our friends at Joel Real Timing, the official timing software of LSR TV. Whether you spend your time on the sim from behind the wheel of the pit box or the spotter tin, ERT is your go to software for iRacing timing and scoring analytics. As always, get more information at joel real timing. Dot com. First time tonight that the control truck is actually in control of every restart. And it is a good jump for the 0-2 of Oregon. Trevor to clear by a car length to turn one. And here comes Dalton from third. Yeah, and, you know, I don't believe that Andrew Fish has the strongest short car run. Or, uh, you know, he started to really capitalize going into the later parts of the run. So we'll see how this works out as he's under pressure from John Theor. Obviously on that better line early on into this run but he's gonna fall right back behind in the fourth place where he restarted he's gonna try again on that bottom side of him try again on the bottom side why not go for it try to complete the move and on the inside of Fayash, not going to work out that time, but a quarter number two will have an opportunity to challenge once more side by side. Like at this end of the racetrack, doesn't look like that that is going to work out either. And the outside, just too good. And about this deja vu, Fayash on the outside, the 23 following him. These are two drivers who we had seen working together earlier in this race to do it again right now, teaming up on Theodore. But in front of them, side by side for the race lead, here comes Tyler Dalton inside of Evan Morgan. If the 19 machine could make this happen, the first time for him to get the SMS Chevy out front. Started this race outside of the front row, dropped a couple of spots early, but all of a sudden, first and second place, trucks are gone, and it is all him. Great exit at a turn two. Tyler Dalton to the race lead, lap 56. I'm sure that Devin Morgan wanted to keep him on that bottom side to try to roast his tires a little bit more, but Tyler Dalton just had a better entrance into the corner and unfortunately got in front of Devin Morgan. Now Devin's going to have to, at the same time, get back to Tyler Dalton, but holding up Andrew Fash and that wasp nest behind him at the same time. So that's really the difficult part about being a driver, trying to catch this driver and get around him, but not let a car behind him pass him. That's the key is you have to certainly strike that balance and might not uh, work out all that badly for Morgan as he paces along in second of Fayash's third and then all of the actions back and forth. Interestingly enough, Fayash was able to complete that move on the 84, but the 23 was not. And it's the 22 of Lyde now on the inside. He'll get by the 84, so John Lyde to fourth. And Peterson, who was unable to execute up top, now tries the inside as well. Here he goes down into the corner. Christian Peterson trying to get around John Lyde, doing everything he can, keeping that truck down to the uh, yellow line, that is. 
And John Lydae continuing to press on. 54 nearly gets in the back bumper of the 84. Uh, that's Kenny Lowry. Haven't really talked a lot about him tonight. He's in seventh after starting 20th. So that's a great uh, run by him thus far. Still uh, 90 laps to go here at Richmond, but obviously laps are going to cl click off a little bit quicker. But the th top three have gotten a little bit of separation between them and the number 22 of John Lydae. Yeah, that's the goal. Just get a little bit of space. You kind of go back to the motions like we saw on that nearly 50 lap green flag run to kick off this race. If we were to stay green at this point, probably a pit stop still on the horizon before these drivers are going to be able to make it all the way to the end of this one. So that's certainly something they have to keep in mind. But there is going to be a little bit more aggression and a little bit less of that complacency that we saw earlier on with some of the battles for position here on this second run. Look at that 23 of Peterson again, always on the move. He tried the top side, it didn't work. He went to the inside, didn't work. And once again, a go up on the outside of the racetrack. He flashed the nose on the front. He's got to run down the back straight away. They'll pull even to turn three. This end of the racetracks though, where that 22 Elide can clear him. If he so dares to slide up, he will not. But again, you can clearly see on the inside, that end of the racetrack a lot better, but the 22 done fighting. He does not want to tear up that race car any further. Lifts out of it, and Peterson's persistency pays off as he slides to P4. And you know that just goes along with it. You know, keep on trying everything that you can. Keep on throwing caution to the wind uh, with that as they're going to pass the number 48 of Tom Morano, putting him in eighth lap down or seventh lap down as another caution comes out of him. Another caution to flag, and it's Kenny Lowry, the number 54 Chevrolet, was scored in seventh at the time. And... Well, I had to say we saw one of these coming. That's about as Richmond as a wreck as you can get. The replay will show as we take a second look. It was the one truck of Reese Bayham. Late flash of the nose to the inside. And even on the back straight away where the racetrack obviously doesn't bend like that D-shaped front stretch here at Richmond. The inside's still wide open. It's a very late arc into the corner. And the one who makes a late move has the positioning by the time the 54 comes down. And it is a very lazy spin for Lowry. Any other racetrack but Richmond Trevin, that truck probably spins out without damage, but I did mention at the very start that pit road wall right up against you from turn four to one, and that's going to be what causes the damage on the front end of his truck. So, another yellow, 65 laps into this race. Most drivers only have one set of tires left on pit road, so a lot of them fake the entry and dive back out. William Kemp for the O9 might be the first driver to actually commit to coming all the way in. Maybe just to get some fuel to try to make something up. Because, again, if you took four tires, you've only got four left on those two sets. Yeah, and, you know, if you're back there, William Kemp sees that he's pretty far back. So, going to try with more tires. Uh, interesting call. But, you know, now you're gonna not probably not going to have any for the rest of the race. Uh, unless he did not come down that first stint. But, nonetheless, you got to try something different if it's not working out for you. So... Tyler Dalton with the race lead, then Devin Morgan and Andrew Fayash. So great job done by all these guys. But uh, you know, little little mid race action going on right now. So nothing wrong with that. Yeah, nothing wrong with that at all. And certainly a caution to fly. Get this, I guess, quickly maybe is the way to put it. Off the one that we just saw previously uh, allows these drivers to just give these tires a break. You're not coming down to get new tires. Uh, I don't think it changes the fuel window and therefore the pit cycle to the end of this race all that much. It's just an opportunity to get your breath, let those tires cool down just a little bit, and then you'll get set to go back at it again, no doubt. On the flip side of that, sure, you're, you know, you're saving the race car for four or five laps at max, but we are going to group everybody up. And any time you have a restart, head it down to turn one at Richmond. You never know what happens. It's not quite a place like a Pocono turn one, but... And certainly an exciting one. We've seen plenty of challenges mounted from those trucks on row two. We'll see if that happens again. And, of course, Morgan led us to the green flying the last time. Not going to happen this time. Tyler Dalton in control. Yeah, Tyler Dalton's going to see. We're going to see what he has to give on a restart. So that's always exciting. And, you know, the more you start in front, the more the O2 Devin Morgan might be able to uh, see what you do at the restart. So, uh, you know, hopefully... We I'm sure Tyler Dalton's hoping that we do not have more cautions so he can continue to press away because he had a great job done uh, on that short run. So we'll see how this works out for him. Andrew Fayash also, it's getting to the latter, later part of this run. So we'll see how this car comes around for Andrew and Christian Peterson. Always 
tough. Uh, he's been pressing all night long, and I don't expect him to stop anytime soon, Evan. Nope, only going to get more so and more so exciting as the night goes on. Ta Novasad's going to be able to get back to the lead lap under this caution flag. Uh, looks like Tom Morano is also going to have an opportunity uh, to get something back. 18 trucks scored on the lead lap, and then Morano, as I just noted, is only now eight laps down uh, from 19th position behind him. Gerald Campbell and Jacob Porter are out of this race. In fact, both of those cars officially out of this one. They bring them behind the wall. They are out of the sim. So their night is officially done. Morano's night is theoretically done. Hard to do much from eight laps down. Uh, but the race truck not looking all that bad. If I'm the 48, you got some front end damage, which I'm going to be concerned about maybe losing that engine as the night goes on. But as long as that can hold in, you get a couple more trucks to wreck out of this race. You can try to squeeze some points at around 16 here on the CEA American Bull Supply Truck Series calendar. Pace car back in this time. Let's see what the 19 SMS Chevrolet has got up his sleeves. It's his field as we roll into turn number four. He's got to get to the cone before he can go. And a red flag of the air off and away. Third restart on the night. The two yellows now behind us. Great job done by Tyler Dalton as he's gonna send it into that turn number one with a hefty lead. The 23, gonna get to that back bumper to the 02. Thought about a bump. I don't think he got to him though, uh, but we'll see how it works out. Andrew Fayash on that bottom side now attacking Devin Morgan on that bottom side. We'll see how it works out for him coming out of turn number four, Evan. See how the inside of the racetrack works out for him as they come all the way down the front stretch to turn one. Fayash still with the inside positioning. He once again marks the trend of those third place trucks being able to make some noise at a restart. And it wasn't even a good restart for the 77 either. Trevor, the 2 was almost all the way clear of him down to the corner. You would think the outside would have given Morgan the opportunity to just get the job done. Look how good he is that time at the outside. He just missed one and two off of the restart. And when he opened up the door for Fayash, not something that you oftentimes get a second shot at. He does have the preferred lane, so maybe he can do something. But that 77 looks awfully sporty. Might clear him this time in three. And, you know, he, you got to love getting second position, but... You know, three cars battling with two cars right behind you, that's just going to give way to Tyler Dalton. I'm sure he's loving that right now. He has a one-second gap over that, and I'm sure he's loving seeing all this action go on in his back mirror just as I say that. Uh, Andrew Fash will take that seven, second position away, followed quickly by Christian Peterson. The nine or the 69 dove right out of line around John Lyde. He's going to try and pass him on that low side. On the low side of the racetrack is where he sits right now and it's getting better as the night goes on there's more rubber getting put down onto the racetrack and that's why it's more viable as the night goes on as you see peterson go to the inside of the racetrack right now so we are side by side at for or second and third as first place tyler dalton's loving this because he's just taking off yeah again another tenth or a thousandth of a second added onto his lead Still side by side with Andrew Fayash and Christian Peterson. We'll see how long it takes for Peterson as he does have an edge going into that or coming out of that corner. Uh, Andrew Fayash going to get a little bit of better run going down that back straightaway. It's just a cat and mouse game at this point. Great run done by both of these drivers. We see them fight all night long, both consistent and coming up throughout the field. Devin Morgan not loving these two trucks right in front of him, but again, Tyler Dalton's loving all this action. Christian Peterson's going to pull out in front of Andrew Fayash, while the 84 of John Theodore is going to go around on that top side of Devin Morgan, trying to get some magic done, and he's going to stall out right there, Evan. Yeah, he's just going to stall out there, and you know, best effort certainly, but uh, again, Morgan almost did those tires very close, if not on, to that yellow line, and look at there again, set up at the corner, I know that tight conditions isn't necessarily what I would have expected when you talk about a hot, slick Richmond raceway. Uh, but the O2 looks like that if that is the case, it only is helping that car rotate. Oh, a little bit of contact done. They, or the Devin Morgan just got a little bit sideways. And, yeah, oh, 84 got into that left quarter panel of the O2, trying to cross him up. And it got him a little loose. But... 84 is going to try and continue to take advantage of that. Still side by side going into P number or turn number three, excuse me. And still with as well as Matt Cucker and John Lyday fighting right behind him. 
Running right behind him, two sets of two by two in this fight down to the corner. So the top three have broken away. It's now Morgan outside of Theodore. And how about somebody who hasn't made a little bit of noise in a little bit of while? It's Matt Cucker once again. Coming back through the field here after uh, an issue on pit lane of some sort. Tend to get something fixed on that race car. Cost him about nine spots on pit road. He'll look to the inside of the 84. So as the O2 makes the move on the outside, Cocker looks to make the move, but again, side Theodore can't catch a break right now under constant fire. Yeah, and he just does not have the opportunity to block a run coming to him. You know, he gets passed by one car trying to set himself back up to get a run back. Oh, or not Christian Peterson, uh, Matt Cucker gets a little bit sideways coming off that corner. He's going to have to fall right in line behind John L L or John Theodore and try something else under pressure by John Lyde uh, going down the back stretch, Evan. Down the back straightaway seems to be a constant theme this evening as the Oh, almost got to the back bumper. Thought he would have given him a shot there. We just crossed halfway here from the Richmond Raceway. So I think that the intensity is to continue to ramp up. I don't think we're playing bumper cars quite yet, but a little bit of a botched entry to turn one there has opened things up for the 22 with John Lyde. So Lyde to the inside of the racetrack, side by side now is, now it's Matt Cucker under fire and that's the risk. If he probably, if, you know, if he sat behind Theodore, Trevin doesn't make that move. Lyde doesn't get to the inside and albeit he's able to hold off and maintain six, but it's the risk you got to take. You go to make a move forwards. If it works, you go plus one. If not, you're on the risk of a couple of guys jumping on you. Yeah, and, you know, you do everything that you can at this point. John Lyde had a little shot but was not able to capitalize. Uh, you know, it, it, it is what it is. got to find a different way around him at this point now, and we'll see how this works out for him going down the front straightaway. But, you know, both of these straightaways work out to each other's favor right now. Uh, passing another... That's Tom Morano on that low side. You see all of those cars passing on that top side. That is a lap car, not for position. Tom Morano got put nine laps down the previous lap, so he's going to try and stay out of everybody's way, thankfully. And Christian Peterson actually catching up to Tyler Dalton. He's knocked about 0.4 of a second off in these past couple laps, so keep an eye on that. A couple of things to keep an eye on is, you know, some of the drivers working their way back forward. Somebody like a cucker who we've been keeping an eye on is... Don Lyde is going to try it again up on the inside of the racetrack. Pushes high up off of the corner, and it simply does not stick. And Rhett Cucker, he will have to try to make the outside work. But, uh, you know, Servant, I think back to my point that the racetrack's getting a little bit more sporty. We have seen a lot more on this run specifically. Carr will try the inside one lap and then try the outside the next lap. They're certainly diversifying their efforts as this race continues to run on something that we didn't see nearly at all in the opening half. Yeah, and you know, that just could have gone along with knowing that this is a really tough track to conquer during the daytime, so they were all running single file, letting all that grip and rubber build up on that track, and then once we got to this part of the race where they know that there is grip, they're just going to start going at it, and we see, we've seen it go on for quite a while now, so... You know, just great job done by these drivers waiting for some action to happen. And here we are, 88 laps in, and action will not be letting go anytime soon. You're not going to be letting go anytime soon. And mention that we crossed the halfway point. We are watching a couple of those side-by-side -side fights. It's cooled down just a little bit. So let's take this opportunity as we cross the halfway point in tonight's Richard 150 to take a look at our iRacing to Midway Race Break. Brought to you by iRacing, the world's premier online racing game with professionally organized racing from NASCAR, IndyCar, IMSA, the world of outlaws, and more. At lap number 89, Tyler Dalton, your race leader. He is being caught by second place runner Christian Peterson. Peterson about a half a tenth quicker per lap right now, running in second. Andrew Fayash, the third, also nice and tight in that number three spot. As noted, Evan Morgan behind in the fourth. And then you get back to roll. The action has been John Theodore right now in P5. Matt Cucker climbs back to P6. John Lyde falling to seventh position to Matthew Murphy at a race high P8. He is one of your biggest movers tonight with Jeremy Adams behind him ninth. And then the biggest mover rounds out your top 10 is Derek Paulson up 11. Kenny Lowry is going to be 11th starting uh, 20th, so that's a great job done by him in that 54 machine. Reese Bam, we've seen him up in the front, but that first pit stop really messed him up. He is in 12th right now. 
13th, John Mignaka. Paul Henley will be 14th, 15th. Kyle Liverall, uh, P16, William Kempf. We talked about him a little bit up in this top spot, but now falling back a little bit. William or Jeremy Watkins uh, will be 17th. Todd Novus had your last car on the lead lap and a P18. Tom Morano, we've seen him uh, straggling along that bottom side around the track getting lapped. Unfortunately, he is nine laps down, and that'll be 19th position. Last two cars have pulled it behind the wall. That's Jared Campbell and Jacob Porter. That's a complete look top to bottom at your iRacy midway race break. For more information on the wide variety of sim racing possibilities online, you visit iRacing.com to sign up today. And if you're looking at getting involved in the iRacing.com world, now's the time to do it. If you go to iRacing.com forward slash membership, you can get anywhere from a three-month to a two-year subscription for 40% off. That's valid on new iRacing memberships only. More information online at iRacing.com forward slash membership. We'll continue to monitor the gap up front. It continues to inch closer and closer between Tyler Dalton and Christian Peterson. But we'll also take a quick opportunity to step aside. Keep it LSR TV nonstop so you don't miss a moment of the action. Tyler Dalton's your race leader. You're watching the CEA American Bull Supply Truck Series on the iRacing Esports Network. Back live from Richmond Raceway, Tyler Dalton continues to lead as we bring you back to LSR TV's coverage of the American Bull Supply Truck Series of the iRacing Esports Network. The gap up and cut in half until last lap. Christian Peterson, number 23 machine, had been as we were following, got to about three tenths of a second off for the race lead, and then with a big mistake with some lap traffic, cost him a ton of time. And all of a sudden, things are back to a half a second. Still nice and tight up front as we bring it back into the LSR TV booth. Evan Pasoko, Trevin Valderrama upstairs with you with Cisco Scaramuza in the production trailer with LSR TV and the IRA City Sports Network. Trevin working around 16 of this 2018 season and with less than 50 laps to go. Good chance that we get to watch this Dalton Pearson battle play out through the run to the end. Nothing's guaranteed. You always have to cross your fingers but this race so far has been very good with a lot of green flag action. 
Yeah, and, you know, this late into this race with only 45 laps to go, essentially, you cannot have a mistake like Christian Peterson did if you're running down a guy like Tyler, Tyler Dalton. And just unfortunately, wrong place, wrong time. We talked about lap traffic becoming a bigger part of an issue uh, early on in this race. And obviously that just happened to Christian Peterson. Unfortunately, he's going to have to track down Tyler Dalton, but it, it just doesn't look like it's happening anytime soon. So maybe he's hoping for a caution and hopefully Tyler Dalton's hoping not a caution here at this later part of the stage. And, you know, just an amazing race so far done by all these guys. Exciting to see these finally these final laps coming to a close. Final laps coming to a close. And, you know, you look at how we've gotten thus far to this point. Race flag, you know, I guess green flag conditions, what I should say, uh, to a point now where you know, the race has been going on for just about 50 minutes. And you're already nearly two-thirds, uh, or you are now past two-thirds of the way through this one uh, in a position where... All of a sudden, you go very quickly from one mindset to the other. One minute, you're coming off of a restart, close to the halfway point. You just had two yellows you know, within 15, 20 laps of each other, and you're really focused on getting a lot right now. And did, I guess you just kind of naturally expect that you're going to have another one in that mindset. But in a race that, that's this distance, and we talked about it, Trevor, a tad bit at the very start, you very quickly go from, hey, we're just logging laps in the middle of the race to it's it's go time. 43 laps left at the board. The last time around, Peterson continues to not only pull away from Fayash in third, Morgan in fourth, and Theodore in fifth, but also close in on Tyler Dalton, who leads this race. Something tells me the 19, if he hasn't been sweating yet, he's feeling it now, closest the car's been since we went back green. Yeah, and, you know, uh, this is a short track action. You know, uh, we were talking more about an inter intermediate track. It's still less than a mile, so short track in my books. And, you know, you, you just got to love how fast these laps click by because, you know, just as you said, you know, you're logging laps at one point, and then all of a sudden you're, you're down to the final 50 laps. So, you know, it's go time for him. So we'll see how this works out for him. Christian Peterson still tracking Tyler Dalton has gotten a little bit closer now 0.2 of a second has gained a couple time and you just see him close so quickly going into turn number one trying taylor dalton feeling the pressure right now evan and when the 23 drives it that hard into the corner it hurts him on exit yeah tyler dalton was better that last time but a two and he's a smidge quicker this time on the front straightaway but for as hard as that peterson irrigation machine is being driven into the corner He's not nearly as much slower off of the corner than I would expect, which tells me that that car is good at rotating center off much more than Tyler Dalton's machine is. And listen, the 19 has had a pretty solid race thus far with a lot of other trucks that have shown speed, no doubt. Matt Kunker, one of those drivers who had climbed back up into a great position and has just now come back down to the pit lane at lap 111 to go for, uh, it looks like uh, four tires and fuel for the driver of the number 60 Honda machine as he goes for the undercut on the strategy here. So keep an eye on him. If this thing is to go green and drivers still need service to get to the end. But, you know, Cucker's made the mistakes. We've obviously seen somebody like a Gerald Campbell get into an accident. But those issues haven't come from the title of Dalton to Christian Peterson to camp. And that's why they're as tight as they've been. It's a half a truck length for one and two now. And here we go. You know, Christian Peterson is not waiting around anymore. We're starting to see the possible green flag pit stops as just seen by Matt Cucker. Todd Novus had a lap down as well, so possibly winning as well. Uh, we'll have to see how this works out for him. Christian Peterson still tracking. Has gone from the range of 0.2 seconds to 0.4 seconds in the past couple of laps. So, you know, sometimes Tyler Dalton's better. Sometimes Christian Peterson is better. But as long as Christian Peterson keeps Tyler Dalton's mirror full of his truck, there could be a mistake looming. We've seen it happen with Christian Peterson early, earlier uh, a few laps to go, but you know, maybe it could happen with the guy who's in lead feeling the most pressure at this race. Well, he certainly handled it well so far, and again, we are making a big deal about how we're late in this race, but I mean, the 19 still got 35 laps to work with, so if you're Christian Peterson, no need to pass him now. I don't want to pass him and then give him 34 trips around the racetrack trying to you know, to get back at my bumper. So he'll probably stay at that distance, assuming that, again, these drivers are going to be able to run this one out to the end, green flying conditions, and with no challenger emerging from the, you know, the, the bowels of third and fourth and whatnot, which is about a half, a one and a half seconds, I should say, back at the race leaders right now, 
here's the 23 machine i'm pretty comfortable uh, with where I sit at the moment. Close it in on the end of this race. As always, want to say a big thanks and uh, to our friends over at American Bull Supply. Coverage of the CEA American Bull Supply Truck Series is brought to you by American Bull Supply. American Bull Supply is a wholesale distributor of pool and landscaping products. We serve pool maintenance, resorts, and apartment complexes and HOAs in the Las Vegas area. For more information, you can visit them on Facebook by searching American Pool Supply LV. So big thanks to them for being a part of this Sunday night action. As we mentioned, we will be back next Sunday for a makeup race from Milwaukee and then right back into it the week after that from Eldora and Canadian Tire Motorsports Park. It's a month nonstop of CEA truck racing on your home for sim racing. I look up front again. Nothing's changed. 23 is there, but I wonder if I'm Tyler Dalton, Trevin. He comes up and gets on my bumper, probably shaking in my boots, but if he gets up to my bumper and can't do anything, or again, the 23 could very well just kind of be sitting back, but if I'm the 19, he gets to me, hasn't or can't pass me, I wonder if he gets a little bit less nervous the more they run this close together. I'm sure he does. You know, that there's really nothing else that really Tyler Dalton can do you right now he's feeling a little bit uh I'd feel vulnerable uh you know you're you're the only guy well there's not anybody between you and second place it's just you and him nobody behind Christian Peterson for another uh, over a second so you know it's just you and him conquering this track that's so small and taking a turn every couple of seconds that could mean the whole entire race for you so you know he's he's I'm sure he's feeling a lot of pressure right now. I'm sure he's trying to do everything that he can, coming to 25 laps to go in a few laps time. Uh, but, you know, it's really it's really cool to see this battle going on and Chris Peterson really just keeping up with him and not really letting him get away from him. And again, probably Christian Peterson. We've known him to be a very methodical driver. I believe he's just hanging out and he's, you know, doing what he needs to do to stay there, not let the 19 get away to the point where if Tyler Dalton makes a big mistake, 23 is not going to be like, you know what, I'm fine. If he makes a big mistake, he's taking it, but also don't waste your race car. You see the 48 machine get, a, get a passed right now as a numerous amount of drivers continue to trickle down to the pit lane. Only 10 cars right now scored on the lead lap as pit stops continue. Curious if your race leaders have an amount of confidence that they can go to the end. No, Peterson gonna come in now at 123. We alluded to it, Trevor, when we saw that restart with about 80 or 90 or so laps to go in this race that a pit stop would probably be needed. I was thinking though your race leaders might have been okay because they're normally not some of the last to pit. They normally kick off the pit cycle. So with them coming down just now, I think Tyler Dalton has to react and he will. That might put Peterson in the catbird seat though. Yeah, absolutely. And Christian Peterson, you know, taking his time down pit lane. We'll see where he cycles out uh, when he does. Did a great stop going inside. We'll see how he comes out of it. Great job done by him. He'll take four tires and some Sunilco Racing fuel and uh, waiting for that blue cone that they just implemented. He can't just come up on the back stretch, so he has to wait for that blue cone right there. Now he can enter up, and he shuffles right behind uh, John Lyday. So we'll see exactly how this works out for him. Watching now, uh, Tyler Dalton down pit lane. Dalton going to come down to the pit lane. We'll see where he ends up. When he cycles back onto the racetrack, it's going to be four tires. No doubt he went for the four tire stop earlier. Where's Christian Peterson already gone? The 23 already headed down the back straightaway. He's going to have a large margin between he and Morgan as uh, those drivers start to uh, certainly spread things out. Morgan just now re entering the racetrack. Tyler Dalton in the 19 also playing catch up. Peterson, I think, may have called it right. I think he did, and that was a great job done by him. Reese Bam out in the lead right now, quote-unquote lead, uh, while the pit cycles are going through, and he's going to pull down the pit lane right now, handing the lead over to, I believe, will be Kenny Lowry um, while this cycle of pits are going down. But technically, your race leader is Christian Peterson. Uh, he is back on that lead lap now, and it's, everybody else is coming back from these pit cycles. And cycling through, as you mentioned, Lowry right now ends up as our race leader. 54 machine started 20th, has not come down to the pit lane. Trying to get a number on to maybe who is that first driver who has completed service. Andrew Fayash down recently. Somebody like a, a Paul Henley in the 16th machine who's 
started towards the front of the field, but as it's shown an exceptional amount of speed, I don't believe that we have seen him come down to the pit lane yet either. So it could very well be Peterson in a fantastic position uh, and maybe Matt Cucker as well we're hearing because you remember Trevor Matt Cucker came down to pit when nearly nobody else did way early he went for the way undercut in P6 he's currently leading Christian Peterson now he's a lot slower than Christian Peterson so an upcoming battle I think for P6 and P7 maybe the battle for the race lead as far as where we sit in this cycle yeah we're it's he's about a second and second point three now about a second exactly uh, away from him. That's Christian Peterson to Matt Cucker. So, of course, going to have a great race going for the rest of this time for 20 laps here at Richmond, Devin. And closing into the end, I think a lot's going to happen in the closing 20 laps of this race. Lowry's going to have to pit. Lavrault, Kemp, Theodore, and Henley. And with Lowry and Lavrault, that's a battle for the race lead right now. Again, we are expecting those cars to have to pit, but... I mean, right now, it's the battle for the race lead on track with a four in the 54, and you do want to keep a half eye on that, but the battle with Cucker is what you want to watch right now. The 60 dot of Cucker under attack from Christian Peterson. The way undercut for that 69 truck might put him in a better spot than I think sixth where he was running before, but I don't think he's going to be able to hold off his teammate. And we'll see how this all works out for him. You know, you got a lot of cars that you can work with right here. Try to use them as a pick to try and get Christian Peterson behind you a little bit further. But, you know, it's a little difficult. Matt, or, uh, John Theodore going to be passed on that bottom side. Going to let them go with ease. And now working with the 02, I believe, right in front of them. Uh, lap down car, so that will not be for position. Uh, Devin Morgan right from two laps down. Christian Peterson now. Getting to that lower side of him. We'll see how this all works out going into turn number three, Evan. Now going to be the battle for fourth and fifth, but it should be the battle for the race lead by the time we get to the end of this one. And a good defense by Cucker. The inside miles better than it was earlier in this race, but the outside still is the place to be. Is that going to be enough to make up for the lack of tires on Matt Cucker's machine and the advantage that Christian Peterson has, though, running a little bit of a weaker line. The 23, half a truck length lead, down to quarter number three, trying to get on by the 69. Now holding on for dear life with 16 laps to go. And down to turn one, we'll drive it in hard. And to make the pass, he's got him. Peterson slides through in what right now is third. And exactly as we predicted, you know, you're going to try something, Matt Cucker, and Obviously, sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't, and now you got to start thinking about Kenny Lowry and William Kemp. They're, the, Will, William Kemp is three seconds ahead of Christian Peterson, so you know you're waiting a little bit longer uh, to pit, and that might not work out for you as much. Uh, we saw him pit a little bit earlier than all these guys, so maybe he might be good to go to the end, and uh, we'll see how this works out. But Kenny Lowry, you know, you, you got to think about him. He has to come down pit lane still, most likely, so. Well, he, he's going to lose a little bit more track position, Evan. He's going to lose a little bit more, and that continues as this run goes on. Cocker in a position where he's going to have to try to hold off Fay Ash. I think Fay Ash is going to be able to get to him. He may be able to outlast Tyler Dalton and end up with maybe a third place finish in this race. All of this assumes, again, that Lowry and Kemp are not going to be able to make it. They're within 12 laps now at the end of this race. Kemp's going to get passed straight up. That's not going to make a difference. Here comes the 23 to the inside, and Peterson takes over second. So it doesn't matter if Kemp can get to the end. I guess it does as far as how many points he can get, but not in the picture of who's going to win this race. But if Lowry could make it, he's got a seven-second lead. I don't know if Peterson makes that up. Now the four of Kyle Everall down and into the grass. He got sideways all on his own at a quarter number four. Very calm though through the grass, keeps it under control. And we stay green, no yellow, but a close call at 12 to go. Great job by Kyle there to keep it together and not bring out a caution. Uh, you know, great job, you know, self-spin as well. And you know, had a great recuperation going through that grass area. Probably just left the yeah, ass so seesawing that wheel back and forth, not bringing out that caution. now. Focus turns back to Christian Peterson. Can he work down that six second and win? And if, will Kyle uh, Kenny Lowry come in for his final stop or can he make it all nine laps? 
trying to get those nine laps to the end if you're the 54 of Kenny Lowry and you know it's been a significant amount of time since we've seen these drivers down to the pit lane it's been a long green flag stretch no doubt for Kenny Lowry the last time that you know I believe we saw him down to the pit lane just referencing you know the speeds on the chart for him would have been way back at lap number six eight in this race under caution flying conditions the last time we saw him down and in for service so talking about 79 laps or actually the the flip side of that coin i think that's trying to stretch this one out nearly 71. And great job done by him if he can make it you know saving fuel the number eight right below him at the mo or the number five excuse me gets into the side of him a little bit that's derek paulston a uh, very interesting move done by him and we'll see how this works out for him now christian peterson four and a half seconds back from kenny lauer we'll see what the timing says when they cross the start finish line uh but you know for now it's it's really great done by all of these drivers you know christian peterson now a little less than four seconds behind Kenny Lowry with coming to five laps to go so I'm sure Kenny Lowry's praying that Christian's tires go away a little bit quicker but it's just not how it's going to work out so it's going to be close Evan it's going to be close for sure I didn't think Peterson would have been able to catch him straight up but the challenge by the five certainly has it helped and this is a nightmarish situation for the 54 the five is in the way again and it's not only him but look at all the lap trucks contact now and there's gonna be a rock the five truck gonna get turned by Lowry and a caution at five laps to go is gonna leave Lowry in the race lead but if he gets hit with the end of the longest line penalty for causing the caution Peterson in second will go to the point probably with a green white checkered on the line and no tires for anybody left on pit road they collect the pace car but the 54 Trevin was tired and the five getting in the way yeah and you know great job you know you, you got it you got to tip a hat to 54 you know he, he got roughed up by the five going into turn number one a few laps ago and you know, you, you, there's only so much that you can take and, you know, got checked up a little bit from John Theodore and unfortunately, you know, caused that incident. So, you know, it, it's a thing and it's unfortunate, but we'll see if we have enough laps to come back to a green flag for one lap shootout. And we will see. That's the interesting thing that we have to specify is if we do get a, a restart lined up for a one lap shootout, it'll just be one lap. The only time we go to you know, CEA overtime procedure is if we actually enter into excess of the 150 lap schedule. So I'm thinking, I'm right along there with you, Trevor, that I think it is going to be that one lap uh, shootout to the end of this one. Of course, we have to wait to see if the five has any sort of a penalty. It was a tough situation because there were three lapped cars in front of him. They all checked up. He got into the five. He did get on the brakes as soon as he could, but you could tell that Lowry was certainly sweating. Maybe he felt that he could make it to the end. These yellow laps will help him stretch to the end. But if he felt like he could make it, Trevin, he was not in a position to work that kind of a fuel game and then lose it on half of the racetrack blocked in front of him. And you can feel the 54. At the end of the day, are you supposed to yield to the race leader? Sure, but those trucks in front of him were all battling for position. So... You know, you can look at it on either side of the coin. Either they should have gotten out of the way or they had every right to fight against each other. But just an unfortunate set of circumstances for the 5-4. If this race restarts, I don't see any way he hangs on on top of Peterson. Yeah, and, you know, it's a really a decision for race control to make. You know, you, you just made two compelling, uh, you know, stories for both sides. And, you know, it's a little tough. But race control always makes a great decision. And... You know nothing happens and that is it kenny lowry will have to give up every position till p number 12 he will be deemed responsible for this incident evan and just as we expected it's a the tough pill to swallow for kenny lowry and i understand the frustration but the rules are the rules he was the cause of the caution he will get that end of the longest line penalty and the lights on top of the race car trip at two laps to go are on. So we will not have that one lap shootout to the end. Instead, I believe this transfers us over into CEA overtime procedure. So once lap 150 is complete, our schedule distance, the pace car would head down and we would have two laps to decide it. So 
Now it's a lot more interesting of a fight. Christian Peters did a bad cucker. How many times have we talked about this? They're going to be one, two, and they're going to have two laps to fight this one out. If you were with us on Wednesday, you saw Christian Peterson with a great run to the end in the race against Jake Austin in the Cars eSport Tour. If you haven't heard of it, by the way, the vote for the best throwback paint scheme still live on our website at livesteracing.com. Scroll down. You can vote on your favorite throwback paint scheme till Wednesday. But as we get set to go in this race, be Peterson a head-to-head -head against Cucker. Not nearly championship implications that we're used to between these two, but once again, it's another fight between the 23 and the 69. And, you know, we just see this week in and week out. You know, it's it's incredible how these drivers are able to, you know, completely just battle against each other, and we always see them up towards the front. And usually it's Seth the Merchant as well, but again, he's out this week, and, you know, it's incredible. It is, and we will see how this race is going to shake out. Thought that it was going to be green this time, but it looks like we'll have to wait again one more time around for the pace car to actually dive down and, and get out of the race. So the lights go on on top of the pace car here. Trevor to Christian Peters to the bat cucker. Is it going to be one of those two? And if so, which one? Or do you, you see somebody else playing spoiler from row two on back? I, you know, it's a little difficult. We've seen the driver in first always get such a great jump that the second place driver is able to jump down and follow him into that corner. I just think it will be between um, Christian Peterson and Matt Cucker. I don't think Tyler Dalton and John Lyde can spoil the day. See if they are able to play spoiler on what happens here in the grand scheme of things. Christian Peterson looking for a fourth win on the season as he leads the championship by a mile. Matt Cucker not in a championship fight, but when he can start on Sundays, there's one thing on his mind, and that is race wins it's a green and white checker finish for the richmond raceway in the cea truck series looking for the green flying as peterson goes two laps to go do they make it to the white and matt cucker is now going to jump down try not to get tyler dalton into that second place position yes he will not and you know great fight fighting go around john light is going to take that third position or try to at least while andrew fayash as well trying to take that away from him as well Tyler Dalton goes way up the lead while Christian Peterson is able to edge out uh, Matt Cucker going to the white flag, Evan. 19 gets eaten alive with the old tires. Tyler Dalton in the 19 falls back, and Matt Cucker is able to defend second, but took him just a little bit too long. The first time in one and two to hang on. Here comes Fayash. He'll try to make it a fight for second, but out in front, it is all your championship leader, Christian Peterson. Going to get win number four on 2018. Winner from Richmond. Great job done by him. Great restart. And how about that race for second position? Andrew Fayash the third came off the corner with a head of steam, but just was not able to get to the back bumper of Matt Cucker and pass him. So, you know, great job done by all these guys. And... Great job done by Andrew Fayash coming from 6th to 3rd. Yeah, great job to be able to make up those spots. Not enough to spoil all the way up top, but fantastic run to the end of this one. And drivers are going to park this one on the front straightaway. Matt Cucker so close once again in the 69. But in this case, he gets to watch the 23 doing the burnouts again. Christian Peterson, your winner from Richmond Raceway. Another one for him in the American Pool Supply Truck Series. We'll take an opportunity to step aside when we come back to LSR TV and the iRace City Sports Network. We'll be trackside talking with your top finishers to get you set for what's next here on your home for sim racing. So as we step aside, when we come back, Peterson will be in Victor Lane. The post-race show is next.
Mission 22 is dedicated to unite the country in the This broadcast is the copyrighted work of LSR TV and may not be rebroadcast, retranslated, or used in any form without the express written consent of Live Sim Racing LLC and iRacing.com Motorsport Simulations. LSR TV would like to thank you for your support and we hope you enjoy tonight's broadcast. And we are back live from the Richard Raceway, dejected Kenny Lowry and some other drivers having some post-race chat as we welcome you back at LSR TV's coverage of the Championship Esports Association American Bull Supply Truck Series and your home for sim racing and the iRacing Esports Network. Evan Pasoko, Trevin Valderrama with Cisco Scaramuza with you. We'll go down trackside, talk with the top finishers in just a moment. As always, green white checker finish procedure means that the results are unofficial. But the way I count them, Christian Peterson, your race winner in this one. Matt Tucker comes from second, and Andrew Fayash, the third, is third. We'll talk with all of them momentarily. John Lyde, fourth, and Matthew Murphy in a top five spot with Tyler Dalton, sixth. William Kemp, seventh, eighth, Reese Bayham, ninth, Jeremy Adams, and Jog may knock it in tenth. Again, all of that is by an eyeball. And across the start finish line, those results are unofficial at the moment the one driver though who i'm pretty comfortable with in their finishing spot is christian peterson he continues to be oh so good in this american bull supply truck series and he is once again a winner on sunday it's here on lsr tv as we go track side with the driver of the two three christian congratulations on the win in this one it looked like it was going to be that marathon sprint to the end at first i'm sure you were thinking you probably just had to beat out the guys on your pit cycle. Next thing you know, Kenny Lowry's trying to stretch this one to the end. And you started to get close there when that yellow came out at five laps to go. Just tell us, walk us through that entire run and, and of course, all of the excitement that unfolded at the very end. Yeah, the uh, the caution there. I think Kenny got kind of screwed getting sent to the back, but calls a call and, and uh, you know, you, you can't really argue that. So, um I felt kind of bad for him getting sent there because he had a really good strategy and he played it really well. And um, as well with Cucker and, and a couple other guys, I, that was the first time in a while that I felt like I pulled a strategy off uh, pretty much perfect um, other than, you know, Kenny obviously had a better one, but he got screwed there. So I just, uh, I didn't expect to be as quick as I was with how I was doing in practice and, and how we qualified, but um I just seemed to get a handle of the truck as the race went on, and it just uh, it just got better. Racing at a track like Richmond, we saw, it appeared at least as the race went on, that the inside was a little bit more of a viable option, but we saw multiple occasions where you were either stalking somebody for position or working in and around somebody like a fast trying to gain spots that you try outside, you try inside, especially later in the race that you felt comfortable at least uh, to to attempt those moves wherever you could. How was the truck handling as you tried to work through the field? Oftentimes, in a lot of traffic. Uh, early, it was it, it went to the top pretty early, and then um, it seemed like after we had a few yellows, I think that we had two yellows kind of back to back in the middle of the race there, and uh, it kind of went to the back to the bottom after that. So um, I thought it, the gear was a little bit tough, and I think that helped the top, but. Um, it seemed it seemed like both lanes were pretty even, and uh, you just had to pick and choose and and drive accordingly to where where you were. In the grand scheme of things, there's still a long way to go in the season, but you guys have really padded things thus far. There's a lot of drivers tied with you for top ten. Tyler Dalton's got the same number as you. I'm taking a look at the finishing results, I think John Theodore is also going to match that mark of yours for top tens. But the big difference comes with the top fives and the wins. You guys are able to have that little bit extra, which has you. A couple of miles in front of everybody else in the points. What's that little bit of an X factor been that's ended up being the difference maker thus far? Uh, I'm not sure. I think just consistency. I guess I don't. I don't know. Uh, Seth's hanging right there, but he hasn't shown up in a couple of weeks, and 
So uh, if he hang, if he shows up, I'm sure maybe it'll 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 be another points race. But um, really, just just capitalizing on on the on the things I can. And we've had some bad weeks. Definitely had some bad weeks. So um, I'm surprised to be as far as ahead uh, as we are. So just keep up the consistency and keep the keep the gap. You're going to have a couple of weeks here of back-to-back action. We're going to make things up at Milwaukee next week. We'll then go to Eldora and Canadian Tire Motorsports Park. So three races in the next three weeks on three very different racetracks. What's your outlook for the next couple of weeks? Uh, Eldora is going to be super fun. Um, Probably going to be banging it off the wall. And then Canadian Tire is going to be a little bit of finesse and and going up and down hills and all that. So, uh, And then the other one... I can't remember what you said, but yeah, it should be a good variety of tracks. So um, looking forward to it. Yeah, the road course at Moss Sports going to be that uh, last one up and at least this string of four. Uh, that one will be on September the 2nd. I appreciate you guys have been able to make it work so many different places. We expect to see you up front in the next couple of weeks. Before we let you get out of here, as always, the sponsors and the shout outs. Who makes it happen for you in the number 23 truck? Uh, like always, it's been Sea Racing, Six Man Inc. or Six Man Race Cars and... Uh, just everybody at um, Peterson Irrigation, Globalcom, and Austin Designs, they uh, help out help out with uh, paint schemes and getting entry fees and all that. So uh, appreciate those guys. And then everybody shows up for the races week in, week out. We appreciate your time as always, Christian. Always fun chatting with you. Congratulations and another good win. This one came down to the wire, but you guys were able to make it work. Uh, whether or not that strategy would have played out, you guys make it stuck at a restart. You and Matt once again somehow find yourselves next to each other, and it was a fun one uh, for us to watch. But again, congrats on the win. We'll uh, catch you in a couple of weeks. You guys will be on track next week. I, I will see you guys in two weeks. So uh, best of luck going forward. Hopefully, I have a chance to chat with you again soon. All right, thanks, sir. Comes out on top again, Christian Peterson, your race winner tonight from Richmond in the CEA Truck Series. We then throw things back to your second-place finisher. It was a side-by-side fight, but Van Cucker barely ends up on top. He comes home P2, Trevin's track side with him. Down here on pit lane with the number 69 and Matt Cucker and done really good this year. And Matt, you know, usually this race we were talking about is done at the nighttime portion of the day, but... Today we're here in the heat, so how was how different was it for you to handle this truck under these hot conditions? Yeah, the truck was a it was a bit of a handful, especially with the gear not being right. It really it was a dog up off the corner, so it was up off the corner was all right, but getting in it was just real tight. You just slide the front end. So what are you gonna do? There's nothing you can do. Yeah, it looked like a lot of fun out there, and you know you saw. We saw you take a little bit of a damage repair. You know how hard was it to, for you to come back from all the way down in the uh, in the in the standings and come up to second uh, after the finish of the race was over? Yeah, that I I actually got, I got pretty, I got pretty lucky. I hit the wall there, or else I probably would have been right in that wreck with Gerald. So I was kind of glad I hit that wall. It was only twenty seconds, but yeah, it was a bit it was a bit harder than I thought it was going to be to get back up there. That's why we had to use some pitch strategy. But uh, I'm glad we could. And, you know, we're talking a lot about, you know, next week is a makeup race at Milwaukee Mile. Then you have Eldora Speedway and then Canadian Motorsports Park. Uh, you know, it it's a great it, a group of different three tracks that are going to be coming up in these next couple of weeks. How are you feeling going on uh, throughout the rest of the season? Uh, I mean, it's going to be hit or miss if I'm here or not to race. I mean, I'm just show up when I can and uh, do good, we do good. And if not, then we burn the trailer, so... If we if we're here if I'm home I'll be able to race if not, well. All right, and uh, you know before we let you go, any sponsor shouts? Who gets it done for that number sixty nine machine? I gotta thank Team Vincere, uh, Globalcom, I Airlines, uh, Turn Three Auto Transport, Scott Austin Designs, Peterson Irrigation. You guys are putting on a show, and um, Kyle Barnes are putting us all together with with American Pool. All right, and that was your second place finisher of Matt Cucker in the 69 machine. And uh, thank you, Matt. Thank you. All right, and now the third place finisher of Andrew Fayash, the third. Andrew, starting 11th, finishing third. You know, we saw you battling out on the bottom side, on the top side. What did you really prefer to pass people? Uh, 
to pass, I, I guess the top, I mean, just side by side, I'd rather the top here. Um, unfortunately, the gear, I don't know. Uh, I don't know if it was a fixed set or if they, they made the set themselves or, or what. Um, I honestly don't know. But uh, the gear was quite long. We were lucky to get to 8,000 RPMs at the end of the front straightaway. So um, that kind of made um, passing on the bottom just darn near impossible after uh, after about 5, 10 laps on the tires. So um, it was rough. But yeah, the top side was, was the place to be, I think, to make passes. But the the tough part is when everybody's running the top, I don't know how you go, how you get to their outside. Um, especially because the only way to really set somebody up going to the top, you have to outbreak them and you can't outbreak somebody when they're still in that lane. Yeah. It was a lot of fun to watch you, uh, you know, battle back and everything. And, you know, obviously you came in the later parts of this season, have done four races thus far with us. And, you know, is this really just getting ready for next season's uh, season and getting ready, knowing everybody and, you know, knowing how they race? Uh, I'm just here to have some fun. I don't know. Um, I don't know in the future what uh, my schedule is going to look like. Uh, I started doing videography work at, at my local racetrack instead of driving there this year because I couldn't afford to race there. And they didn't have a video guy, so I started doing that. And um, you know, if I have a couple more tracks on uh, on tap next year or something, if if something comes along, then I might be busy on Sundays anyhow. So I don't know yet. We'll see. Um, but I'm just here to have some fun, and that's the only reason I even pit on that last caution was uh, I had four tires sitting on pit road waiting for me, and um, I figured I'm I'm here to have some fun and try to win races anything else and you know i'm not points racing so uh second third fourth it, it doesn't make much of a difference at that point yeah absolutely we've had we've definitely had a blast watching you race around all these guys and you know before we let you go any sponsor shout outs who gets it done for that number uh, 77 machine yeah i want to thank todd kirkwood for all he's done uh, for me all this year with SMS and uh, Kirkwood Transportation is hopping on board for, for Peak for the rest of the year. Um, assuming the paint gets approved for, for the next race, it didn't make it in time last time. But I'm um, also to Toyota for uh, sponsoring us for a little bit that they did uh, the past few weeks. So uh, I'm probably going to run the Toyota out through, through this series, but uh, I'm not sure yet. But uh, there's a good chance just uh, as a... As a thank you, essentially, for uh, for them hopping in for a little bit. All right, and uh, that was your third place finisher of Andrew Fayash the third. Thank you, Andrew. Thanks. And now back to you, Evan. Well, as always, big thanks to Raton finishers Christian Peter, Sid, Matt Conker, and Andrew Fayash the third for giving us a little bit of time to pick their brains late in this one. It had a lot. We had late race race start, green white checker over Tom, which is always fun and. You know, kind of one of the best parts, I'd say, about racing uh, with Kyle Barnes and the guys over at CEA is the opportunity to have those uh, extra laps of the overtime, which is not a standard function on the iRacing service. Of course, a lot of green flag racing at a good night, top to bottom. More than half the field finishes on the lead lap. Anytime you can do that, Trevor, I would call it a good one. So certainly an excited race tonight as Peterson adds on to what was already a 137-point championship lead. Tyler Dalton still the second placed driver to you know in the championship uh, behind Peterson tonight to walk away with a good amount of points he dropped back significantly but he'll still be second headed into the next week but that's really what I want to talk about because we mentioned it a lot of makeup race from Milwaukee that was supposed to happen in June earlier this year that's going to happen next Sunday and it's four weeks in a row if you count tonight we're going to go to Milwaukee we're going to go to Eldora which a trip to the dirt is always an exciting one and then the road course race at Canadian Tire Motorsports Park the week after that. So three races coming up, and I was talking on trackside with Peterson about it. Three races coming up, three very different racetracks. So should be a fun stretch here on Sundays. Yeah, there's really not enough I can say about this league and how amazing it is from, you know, limiting the tires of uh, the tire sets that you have in the pit lane to different kinds of racetracks that you have that, you know, conventionally, 
these trucks wouldn't go to. So, you know, coming up next, you talked about Milwaukee Mile. That's such a fantastic race course. I love the racing that is produced there. Side-by-side -side battles all throughout. It's like a bigger New Hampshire that we got going on, and it just makes such great racing. I'm really looking forward to it. It's, it's going to be an amazing race, Evan. It absolutely is, and we hope you join us for that one. Before we go, though, you'll be able to catch us tomorrow night. Another race with a full throttle Real Sim Racing Cup Series powered by English Auto LLC. Going to be in effect. That's tomorrow night with action beginning at 9.30 p.m. Eastern Tom and LSR TV. And that one can be found over at iRacing Live as on a Monday nights with our premier series, we get so closer to the end of segment two and that much closer to the start of the 2018 playoffs. And then we'll round things out, and we'll be back next Sunday. If you're curious what our full up career broadcast schedule is, you can go to our website at www.limesteracing.com. Stay up to date with us on social media by liking us. That's facebook.com forward slash LSR TV official. And you can follow us over on Twitter at LSR TV. For more information on behalf of the entire team at LSR TV, for American Bull Supply, Kyle Barnes, the CEA, and everybody behind the scenes who makes this happen, and for the broadcast team tonight, for myself, Evan Pasoko, Trevin Valderrama, and our executive producer, Cisco Scarnabuso, I want to thank you for tuning in and congratulate Christian Peterson. It may only been win number four on the season for him, but he's nearly 150 in the championship lead. He'll look for another one as we get set to go racing from the flat mill Milwaukee Mile next Sunday on August the 19th. That race and every single race of the 2018 Championship Esports Association American Pool Supply Truck Series can be found right here on LSR TV. Your home for sim racing. Until next time, good night from Richmond.